Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Raymond Narag. I'm assistant professor at Southern Illinois University. I'm also a visiting professor here at the National College of Public Administration, a college right at your doorstep. I'm also a consultant to the Philippines Supreme Court, Office of the Chief Justice, in order to improve our court systems. I help our Commission on Human Rights for the protection of the uh, people deprived of their liberties. I conduct trainings for the Department of Justice, Bureau of Corrections, the Department of Interior and Local Government, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, in order to improve our jail systems. On the side, I do training for our Metro Rail Transit to improve passenger safety and security. I'm very excited to be doing all these things for our government. But don't be over impressed with those credentials. Because the truth is, ako si Raymond, dating isang preso. You heard it right. I was an inmate. I was an inmate at the Quezon City Jail. I was put in prison for six years, nine months, and four days. At sabi ng mga anak rito, Daddy, don't forget the hours and the minutes. And here's the clincher. I was accused of a crime I did not commit. I was accused of murder, two counts of frustrated murder, and three counts of attempted murder. Whoa! Bigata now! So, the questions uh, that might be swirling into your mind right now is, what brought me to jail? But for me, the more important question is, what did I do while I was in prison? And probably the most consequential and most important question is, what have I done with all those jail experiences I had moving forward? Fair questions to us, right? So let me ask, answer the first question. What brought a young, promising man, full of life, youthful exuberance, just 20 years old, to the most crowded prison in Metro Manila? Well, it was on December 8, 1994. Here at the Beach House Canteen at UP, UP then was engulfed with a culture of fraternity violence. And there was a group of men having lunch at the Beach House Canteen at the main library. And they were having, you know, regular lunch with their friends. And they were suddenly attacked by another group of men with masks, schemas, and bonus, and they were armed with baseball bats and lead pipes, and they gang up on these men. Many of the victims were able to run away except for one who protruded to the root of a tree. His name is Dennis Venturina. The UP police came immediately and asked, who, who could have done this to you? Who, who are the attackers? And they said that they could not identify who the attackers were. Why? Because they were wearing masks. It happened in a split of a second. And they were running for their dear lives. They were brought to the UP infirmary and the UP doctors asked the same thing. And they also answered the same thing. They were not able to identify who the attackers were. Two days after, Dennis died. And of course, it changed. It's rumble. It's now murder written all over. And two days after that, they went to the National Bureau of Investigation, and they claim that they, in the heat of the attack, they were parrying the blows, and while they were parrying the blows, the mask fell off one by one. And one of those whose mask fell off was Raymond Narag. It was on that basis of a false statement that I was accused of murder two counts of frustrated murder, and three counts of attempted murder. There were 11 of us accused. Immediately, I pled innocent. I was not in the scene of the crime, but they made me the prime suspect. Four months after, on April 24, 1997, uh, 1995, a warrant of arrest was issued against me. That was three days before 
my own graduation. I should be graduating cum laude. But instead of marching with the applause of my friends and relatives, I have to drag my sorry feet to the Quezon City Jail, where it will be my home for the next seven years. So to answer that first question, what brought me to prison? Well, I was a victim of a fraternity system that had gone wrong. I was a victim of false accusation. And also, I was a victim of a malady that afflict our criminal justice system. Which leads me to the second question. So, what did I do while I was in Quezon City Jail? Okay, so first let me describe the situation that I was in. In a cell as big as this, okay, this is my cell, okay, um, there will be ideally five people, but the reality is there will be around 30 to 50, sometimes 100 people in this cell. And when we sleep, we have to sleep on the foot of the head of the foot of another. Budget for food is 35 pesos, barely able to sustain our flesh. Marami sa amin namamatay dahil sa gutom. And more importantly, it's the torture of the mind. Okay? Our hearings are postponed every day. Yeah. My parents suffered. We went bankrupt. And on my second year of incarceration, I have to let go the love of my life, my girlfriend. Because I don't want her dragged to the sorry fit that I was in. But I told myself, I was innocent. I am innocent and I will not let the agency of the situation turn me into a low life that I am not. I came in clean. I will go out clean. And so, I made myself productive. Okay? Started when one of the inmates came. Raymond, uh, around six months of my incarceration, marunong ka daw magbasa at magsulat. Ah, oh, opo, taga-UP ka daw, opo. Can you write letter for me? Sure. Okay, bakit? Uh, matagal na akong dinadalaw ng, as, ng nanay ko at kailangan umusad yung kaso ko. Okay, so, dear tatay at nanay, uh, tatlong buwan na po kong nakakulong, mangyari ay puntahan ninyo ang aking lawyer. Humihingi na po ako ng tawad. Di ba? Humihingi ka na ng tawad? Yeah, yeah, humihingi na ng tawad. So, sinasama ko palagi yon. And indeed, the, the mom would come, okay, they follow up the case, and after three weeks, he got released. Pero bago po siya lumaya, na banggit po niya sa mga kasamaan niya, hey, that Raymond dude in Celda this Ocho, marunong magbasa at magsulat. And so every morning, three to four inmates would come, line up, okay, and they will tell me their stories. Dear tatay, dear asawa, dear girlfriend, dear anak, kumihingi na ako ng kapatawaran. And so I became a letter writer. And then one day, there was this inmate and he said, Pwede ba akong humingi ng payo? Kaminin ko na ba ang kaso ko? Bakit? Anong kaso mo? Rape. Naku, alam mo ba ang hatol sa rape? Hindi po. Eh, death penalty yan. Kasi during that time, 1996, mayroon pang death penalty. Ha, ganun po ba? Bakit? Ginawa mo ba ang krimen? Hindi, pero girlfriend ko siya, may nangyari sa amin. Ah, oh, I see. So because of that, I had to educate myself. Okay? I learned uh, the criminal procedure, the elements of the crime, different ways of release, rights of the accused. And every Thursday, I asked the warden to give me a time slot. Magtanong kay Raymond. Kaya ang tawag nila sa akin, attorney. <laughs> At dahil dito, um, there was this inmate who said, I wish I could write. And so, the volunteer poco, and we came up with our own school, okay? the functional literacy class program where we teach our fellow inmates reading and writing. Okay? At ang tawag po sa nila sa akin, Teacher Raymond. Ayan, so naging teacher na rin ako. And then I volunteered dun sa aming um, uh, trustee as a records, and I do calendar court hearings, and every day I would learn why inmates' cases are postponed. Okay? And um, I also helped our paralegals, okay? And I became very engrossed and very active into the prison community, such that on my fourth year of stay, I became a mayor de mayores, okay? I represented my fellow inmates, and here I was talking to the city mayor, okay? Telling them that we are overcrowded, we need support, okay? I helped the warden pacify the jail when there are riots. I 
rubbed elbows with the Sige Sige, Kumando, Sputnik, Bahayla Nagang, and I wrote letters, believing then that I was a scholar in the wrong place, explaining back at my violence, back at my riot, back at my drugs, and why do prison officers maintain their dignity despite those their situation? I became the spokesperson for the downtrodden and the forgotten. And to paraphrase one sentence, passage, Naniwala kasi ako, I shall be in jail but once. Whatever goodness that I could do to my fellow inmates, jail guards, visitors, I'll do it now because I shall not be in jail again. Indeed, on February 28, 2002, after staying in jail for six years, nine months, and four days, the court said, I'm innocent. Of course! I was not in the scene of the crime. And so, to answer that second question, what did I do with all those jail experiences? I made myself productive. I was embittered instead of embittered. Which leads me to my advocacy. Okay? Immediately upon release, I wrote a book about my jail experience, freedom and death inside the city jail. I divulged everything that I saw, the Mayore system, the pangkat, back at my rancho, and the Supreme Court used it as one of the basis for action program for judicial reform. Justice Davide made me his consultant. I also inspired a group of computer programmers, okay, and we developed this software called Simplified Inmate Record System, wherein the inmates could be basically, you could see basically the, the land of stay that he stayed and the maximum imposable penalty, such that if the land of stay is longer, the computer will prompt, Please release me, let me go. <laughs> because of that, I was awarded Outstanding Citizen of Quezon City in 2005. Just 10 years ago, I was one of their most wanted persons. And when it rains, it pours. I was able to get a scholarship through Fulbright. And when they interviewed me, it's because of that experience and how I face it, that they are sending me abroad, okay? And I finish it with flying corners. I finish my master's and PhD, guess what? In criminology and criminal justice. And now, I'm an assistant professor at Southern Illinois University, teaching, studying the criminal justice system. Which leads me to the final question, what did I do with all those experiences that I had. Well, I use it as an inspiration. I use it as a basis to claim that what happened to me in that jail and my five other friends who are in Munting Lupa right now undeservingly serving a life sentence should not happen to anyone again. And I told to you frat men out there, please let us not engage in fraternity violence because I know too well the difficulty of paying the price for our violence. When I was put in prison, I lost three things. I lost my freedom, I lost my honor, and I lost the love of my life. I had them all back. The moment I got released, I have trainings okay, with all these jail officers. Okay? But the moment I got released, okay, I... The, the, the UP eventually gave my honors, okay? my cum laude degree. In terms of my freedom, I was able to be set free. Now I know why God put me in jail and re released me back. He has plans for me to honor him. But more importantly, I love my girlfriend back. And now we have three kids to boot with my ala ala story to remember. <laughs> Friends, I am Raymond Narag, isang dating preso. I took a path less traveled, not because of my own doing, but because of circumstances stronger than me. But I took it head on. Cliché at my sound, from lemons to lemonade. Let us use our personal sufferings let us use 
our personal journeys, the things that our government did against us in order to find solution to the many woes of our country. Tulad ng kasabihan sa loob ng kulungan, walang tutulong sa preso, kundi kapwa preso. Walang tutulong sa Pilipino, kundi kapwa Pilipino. Thank you very much.